independent thoughts, independent life. This is Chad Benson. He did it, and that's good that he did it. Yesterday, of course, Biden came out and said, all right, enough of this. We're banning all imports of Russian oil and gas and energy. That means Russian oil will no longer be acceptable at U.S. ports, and the American people will deal another powerful blow to Putin's war machine. This is a move that has strong bipartisan support in the Congress and, I believe, in the country. Americans have rallied to support their Ukrainian people and made it clear we will not be part of subsidizing Putin's war. Yeah, that's good. It's good. I mean, it's the first step in in trying to go after the last of the things that are available for us to hit. Because we're really running out of stuff at this point in time. Right. The big thing now is that the uh, American companies are pulling out yesterday. McDonald's. I mean, you've got, uh, you know, you've got all of these companies moving away at, at a high rate of speed. And it's a weird thing. It is a weird thing when you think about the fact that we have American companies and companies globally, actually, not just American companies who are. Going, you know, what? we're going to be in this. We're going to be in this. And the only way we can do that is by saying we're not going to participate at all in your country. We're done in your country we're going to pull out in your country throwing an economic war at the pooter russia is being isolated both financially and now businesses are pulling out you see mcdonald's saying they are temporarily suspending shutting down 850 of their restaurants there starbucks PepsiCo and coca-cola also among the companies that have said they are pulling out sales of some of their products and remember what we've always talked about right you as a as an autocrat a, a mini dictator if you will uh can get away with stuff as long as people have some form of freedom whether it's economic freedom or it's freedom to kind of just be and say what you want right they they need something economic freedom is the thing that really will drive this the hardest they need some sort of freedom in particular if you're busy worrying about your two bedroom two bath apartment you got a kid on the way you got a job you got a mortgage right? You're planning for for a holiday. It doesn't matter where you live. If that starts to disappear and then you find out you can't say anything in protest because the reason it's disappearing isn't because you're awful at your job. It's because the country's doing something awful and now you are being by default held accountable for it and now you can't speak out either. That's when things get ugly. The CIA director testifying Tuesday, they think 13 to 14,000 Russian citizens have been arrested protesting the invasion. These sanctions from the West hitting everyday Russians in a big way. Their debit and credit cards don't work. Company after company is shutting up shop. And many of the luxuries that they have grown used to over the years are pretty much vanishing overnight. And that's what we talked about. They're becoming North Korea and they know they're becoming North Korea. See, North Korea didn't know, right? You're born and raised in North Korea. You don't know anything other than this. You think the world's just like this. You know nothing else. In fact, the world might as well be flat, and it it ends and begins where North Korea is. Where they, the Russian people, they've got their Levi's now. They've got their rock and roll, their Netflix. They've got everything for all intents and purposes we have. And now it's going away. And it's going away because we've got a guy who's hell-bent on doing whatever the hell that he is thinks that this is going to accomplish for him. And the reality is, it's over now. There is no coming back. There is no tomorrow. What if, you know, like, I always go back to, to and I love to use this example, of he's Larry from Jaws, the mayor. He's trying to save the end of summer. <laughs> when people have been eating throughout the beginning of summer, at your beaches. There is no going back. There's no tomorrow. I'll be a great man in history. Because now he's bogged down in a nightmare that he is going to win. Look, he is, they are stronger. They are strategically, they're a hot mess right now. But they'll eventually crack this egg, if you will. Doesn't mean that they're going to win anything. It just means that they would manage to drive out a a democracy that was next to them, fledgling, 
trying to grow and have driven them out temporarily, they'll lose the occupation. But what have you gained? Nothing. Right? The Ukrainian people want nothing to do with you, and they probably won't trust a lot of Russians from now on, especially their leaders. You have destroyed their country. You've been vilified by the world. Your people are going to suffer irreparable financial harm. You will not be looked at as the great dictator, the great leader. You're going to be looked at as, well, quite frankly, a chump at the end of the day. That's it. More and more of Russians, especially the younger generation, because they're using things like VPN, because they want to find out things for themselves. Polls are coming in, being conducted by companies quietly there to find out what's the feeling of Putin and this. That's not a good starting point for Putin and much lower than approval for his prior actions in Chechnya and Crimea. Now, support is especially low among young adults. This poll was conducted by independent survey research organizations in Russia, which we have vetted. They've asked not to be identified given the political situation there. Yeah. Which is his poll numbers are down tremendously. Especially among young people, older people who are indoctrinated, who grew up in, in some form of the Soviet Union and then through the the try and, and half ass rebuild uh, at times, uh, they they are only watching mostly state TV. I mean, you get, you get outside of of some of the big cities, uh, they, they don't have the access. So they're not Netflix and in Chillin. They're still watching the state TV and the state TV is telling them this is the great uh, you know, uh, denazification and demilitarization of the evil that is the Ukrainian leaders, and we're going to go in there and we're going to be seen as heroes when the reality is it's anything but that. It is. And you've taken away now their freedoms financially. And with those freedoms comes the accoutrements of things like Netflix, things like McDonald's, things like American goods and European goods, things like, you know, money. And you've replaced it with being a pariah. So we'll see how this plays out. But for us, expect gas to go through the roof. It's going to happen. It's going to get ugly. Uh, last week, I paid three thirty nine Monday morning. Got home last night, same station, 439. Gas prices this morning, a new fresh record high, $4.27 a gallon nationwide. In just the last week, in this escalation, you have seen gas prices spike by their biggest amount ever on record, 63 cents higher in just one week nationwide, and many places seeing even bigger jumps than that. Yeah, and we're going to continue to see that uh, as countries and and, and also Putin, because at some point, Putin is going to try to do everything he can to make us even more uncomfortable and the West more uncomfortable. You know, one of the things that Biden talked about yesterday, which is, you know, something that, that, that is real when he talked about energy and why some countries aren't getting on board. We're moving forward with this ban, understanding that many of our European allies and partners may not be in a position to join us. The United States produces far more oil domestically than all the European countries combined. In fact, we're a net exporter of energy. So we can take this step when others cannot. But we're working closely with Europe and our partners to develop a long-term strategy to reduce their dependence on Russian energy as well. Yeah, but it's going to take a while. EU says they're going to speed up the time they would like to get out of the fossil fuel world. Uh, you're going to... You're going to find uh, positions uh, across the board in certain countries that can take a, a necessary step uh, to get away from it. But their dependence on, on Russia is tremendous. Here, we can again get back to a certain position of truly being a net exporter and having uh, reserves to boot that are that are decent. But it's going to take a while. It is. The one thing that we have an advantage of is... You know, in Europe, like if they were going to do certain things, it might take them three to five years to ramp up certain things. We can do it in several months. But it's not going to be an overnight fix. And that's what I think people need to understand. Patrick DeHaan, Gas Buddy. 
as Americans, you know, we can do something still. You know, I hate for us to go to Venezuela and ask the Saudis, but Amer as Americans, you know, we can also try and do our part as well, band together. You look at what's going on in Ukraine and how the Ukrainians are all banding together as a country. We as Americans can do the same thing by curbing our oil consumption, at least for a couple of months, because you know what? That's probably better than going to Venezuela. Yeah. But we're doing that. By the way, we called both the United Arab Emirates and Saudi Arabia, and neither would take our call, but they took Putin's call. So, and they've reiterated their 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 position with Putin, and uh, it sucks. It sucks. Uh, but that's you know, I mean, I think the way that the you know the OPEC in particular, their leader is looking at this and thinking, you're coming here because you're desperate now. You didn't want to deal with me before because you think I'm evil, but because I have something that you may need, especially in a situation where you've got an election coming up, your desperation, I can smell it. So over to Venezuela we go and, you know, see what we'll do there. All that being said, this is going to be uncomfortable for a while. So if you're a business owner and you can have your people work from home still, there's a way that you can go, this is my effort. I'm going to have everybody work from home. Save them some money. Curb some of our, you know, unsatiable quench for, for oil. It's not a bad idea. The little things that you can do to help a country that's being invaded by a guy that, well, quite frankly, is hell-bent on some sort of destiny that apparently only he knows that nobody told him during this destiny, by the way, you're going to jack things up massively but he didn't care three two three five three eight twenty four twenty three at chad benson shows your twitter tweet at his text the program a lot of stuff to get to today did we find the wreck of something yes endurance shackleton's last trip if you don't know what it is it's interesting find it to be interesting it's woke wednesday got a lot of woke stuff to get to plus Little kids, kindergartners are going to give you a pep talk if you need it. That's just what America needs right now. It's a little pep talk. 323-538-2423. At Chad Benson shows your Twitter. MyPillow right now has deep discounts on everything. You go to MyPillow.com slash Benson and use promo code Benson when you're in there. You're going to save big. I'm talking about the deepest discounts on things like the MyPillow, lowest price ever. Lowest price for the My Slippers. You're going you're gonna to save up to 40, 50, 60% on everything. The mattress topper and everything in between. On top of that, you're going to get his book. That's right, Mike Lindell's book about his addiction from being a crack addict all the way up to the the point where he becomes the CEO and runs and, and starts MyPillow. It's, it's a great read of of how a person has struggled and went and you're going to have deep massive discounts on everything take advantage of this and all of the discounts that's what you need to do you need to go to mypillow.com slash benson that's mypillow.com slash benson when you're in there get all these deep discounts that come with six day money back guarantees many a 10-year warranties made in the usa get it you're going to love it mypillow.com promo code benson mypillow.com slash benson promo code benson chad benson show Podcasts are American as hot dogs, apple pie, football, and sushi. Uh, uh, uh. Oh, my goodness. No. Okay, maybe not sushi. Next time you have a craving for something sweet and tangy, download a Chad Benson Show podcast. Mm, boy. That is good. It's different because you get a little bit of saltiness. It's so good because it's sweet and salty at the same time. Get a taste on iTunes, iHeart, or Spotify and binge to your ears content. Oh, yeah. You're listening to The Chad Benson Show. They're calling it one of the greatest undiscovered shipwrecks. Well, now it's been discovered. 170, uh, 107 years after it sank, it went to the bottom of the Wendell Sea. The ship was called the Endurance, led by Ernest Shackleton. He had this quest, man. He was like, he was, he was obsessed with with he was essentially he was a guy that wanted to be famous and rich and failed at pretty much everything and when he became an explorer he uh you know he went all over looking and trying to find things and he wanted to go to the south pole 
He reached the Antarctic in 1914. Uh, and then, well, things went a little south. Extreme conditions. His boat ran into uh, ice, impenetrable. So it's the Wendell Sea. So there's 28 dudes on board. And uh, they get off, right? So there's 28 from Shackleton included. And this is where the story of Shackleton, like, took hold. It had nothing to do with the sailing and getting to 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 the to the you know trying to find the Antarctic South Pole whatever it was. It all do with the fact that they survived, and they made a makeshift camp and they struggled. They struggled. Eventually, the ice gave way. They got on ice that floated north, and they got to Elephant Island. They volunteered a bunch of people. Hey, I'll do this. Shackleton said, "No, we'll do it." A couple other guys to get a lifeboat and head towards South Georgia Island. Finally, crossing it on foot. They ran into a whaling station run by Norwegians, and then the expedition was rescued. All 28 survived. It is 10,000 feet below, and they say it is in perfect condition because it's cold, baby. They're not going to do anything to it. They thought about what should we do, and they said, you know what? We're going to leave it where it is. They're going to map it out. They're going to study it. But they're not going to do anything other than that. Pretty cool. I remember watching. I read. I read a book about it. Then, then Kenneth Branagh did a movie, and I found it to be kind of interesting. I was like, oh, okay, you know, uh, they they threw a little spice in there as they always do. I mean, America, if we did, it'd be like, oh yeah. And then they found a predator. <laughs> oh my god, that's awesome. Because <laughs> we don't do things subtle in America. That's what I'm saying, kids. So what makes America, America? Sometimes we are that loud, crazy puppy because we're still young comparatively to a lot of other places. But other times we are fun. But that would totally be what we did. And then what happened? Well, Shackleton walked over here, and then they saw something glowing under the ice, and he opened it. It was an alien. No way. Yeah. I'm like, I think this is the thing. 323-538-2423. At Chad Benson shows your Twitter. Tweet at us. Text the programs. Get a little woke. Some other stuff straight ahead. Chad Benson Show. Chad Benson Show. Independent thoughts, independent life. This is Chad Benson. Money's a good thing. I just want to point that out. I'm only saying this now. Quick little sidebar. Uh, Robert Kraft, who is what, 80 years old, something like that, owns, uh, uh, well, Kraft Corporation. But he is uh, the owner of the Patriots, probably his most famous thing. He is getting engaged or just got engaged to Dr. Dana Bloomberg. Uh, she is 47. Very attractive looking lady. And... Uh, He bought her a 10-carat ring that looks like something that would be one of those glass doorknobs. I don't know who that's for, but you should that thing should come with its own protection because those are bolt cutters. What's that? I can't get it off, lady. Go get the bolt cutters. Oh, geez. By the way, he has four sons with his uh, late wife. All of them are older than her. Ah, money's a good thing, kids. Money's a good thing. Uh, leadership. You know, great leaders are thrust into it. Too many times now, politicians, they they, they yearn for 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 politics. Uh, you know, I mean, you go look at all of our pol- – by and large, a majority of our politicians now are made up of career politicians. They weren't in any way, shape, or form thinking of other jobs in life, Right? This wasn't one of those things. It's like, God, I got to do it. Now it's like, oh, I could do that. I mean, you get a few of those. But by and large, most of them are career politicians, right? They go to school. They take certain, you know, they, they, they major in everything from poli sci and, and law. They're, they're on a course for politics. And then other people are thrust into it. And that's what you're seeing in the Ukraine. 
Yesterday, actually, after I got off the air, I watched the entire the entire speech that Zelensky gave to Parliament. Uh, did it on Zoom. And there were a lot of comparisons that he's very much, it was Churchill-esque, and it was very Churchill-esque. It was. Again, his appeals are, are, are they're being heard, and he understands that there's not a lot that, that people can do. He would like to have us do certain things, but he also gets it. But it was it was a brilliant speech. And there's a guy who really wasn't, he went to law school, was an actor and a comedian, did a show called We the People or For the People, in which he plays essentially a, uh, a frustrated teacher or something that does something crazy and rants about the government, and it goes viral in his company, a country, and then he becomes president. And that's kind of what happened with him. But his appeals are being heard, but the reality is, is it's, it's, it's still a nightmare. And it's not going to get any better, I think, anytime soon. What you have, as far as, you know, uh, you're not getting any new jets. That's the other confusion. Is there jets? Aren't there jets? Because yesterday, like, Poland's like, all right, guys, America got a great idea. We'll give them our MiGs from the 70s and 80s. If you guys can just give us some used stuff, say, like an F-16 or two. And I'm like, are they trying to trade a Pinto for a Bentley? Ukraine's asked for fighter jets to help stop the onslaught, but confusion among NATO allies after Poland said it had turned over Soviet-era MiG-29 fighter jets to America to give to the Ukrainian military. U.S. officials caught off guard, and the Pentagon dismissing the proposal as untenable, adding, it's simply not clear to us that there is a substantive rationale for it. Yeah. Uh, America's like, hold on a second. So we're, wait, wait, we're giving, we're giving them weapons and you're a NATO country, but you're giving them an air. It's, it, this is again, if it's that little fine line of, of we're involved, we're not involved. We're supplying them, but we're not involved. And for America, I don't know if it was, hey, this is a crappy deal. Let's not do this. And one of the other things they said is, is hey, guys, just in case this guy twists off a little bit more and we got to brawl with him, you guys can't fly any of these right now. So your MiGs are going to be better uh, than, than these because that's kind of where we're at. So we'll, we'll give a hard pass on this. Apparently, though, we are going to, we are going to give them Patriot missiles. Uh, and that, uh, they say is, look, it's defensive. These things aren't here to shoot at anyone. They're there to be defensive. Uh, how good is the Patriot missile system? Well, remember, remember, remember the, uh, the Gulf War and, the, you know, Operation Iraqi Freedom and they had the scuds and they were shooting them off and we're like, oh, our Patriot missiles are great. They actually sucked. <laughs> they were ineffective. They didn't work. Uh, now they've, they've gotten a much better overhaul, but it goes to show you, right? Like the whole disinformation, misinformation. We thought those things were great. You're like, those things are awesome. And they're crap. They were better now, but we're doing that. That's where we're at at this moment in time. Three, two, three, five, three, eight, 24, 23 at Chad Benson show is your Twitter tweet at us and again the greatness uh people are thrust into it you know sean penn was over there and he wanted to film uh what was going on he wanted to get the truth out and then you know it got heavy and he took off to, to poland 44 years old he went to law school he was a, an actor and a comedian who played a president on television he has rallied this nation in an extraordinary way did it surprise you at all and when i talk about president Zelensky, i don't know if he knew that he was born for this but it was clear I was in the presence of something that was new to the modern world in terms of courage and dignity and love that comes out of the man and the, the way he has unified that country. Yeah. Again, greatness is 
usually thrust upon people. Some people are born and they have a destiny. You see it. But for a majority of people, especially in situations like this, it is not that way. It is thrust upon them. And that's one of these things where I'm looking and I'm thinking, this is it. It's thrust upon him. And this guy is is taking it and he is he is he is running with it for his people. And that's something admirable, as opposed to us, according to a new poll done by uh, Quinnipiac. They surveyed 1,400 adults across uh, two days. And a majority of those who identified as Republicans or independents said they would fight for our country in case something like this happened. 68% of Republicans, 57% of independents. How about the adults who are Democrats? 52% said they'd leave the country. In total, 55% said they would stay and fight. Only 38% would leave. That's embarrassing, Democrats. That is embarrassing. If you're not willing to fight, now, again, you don't know what it's like. Somebody puts, you know, it, it war shows up and you're desperate and you have nowhere to go. Uh, and you know, everybody says like, you know, oh yeah, I totally do that. But people don't know. And people who said, no, I wouldn't, you know what? You may end up doing it. And people said, absolutely would. They may end up running. I think a majority of Americans at the end of the day, when push came to shove, they would stand up and fight. I mean, not that we ever have to worry about that. I mean, it's never going to happen here, by the way, there is no, that this is net. This is a scenario of like, would you, it's never happening. It's not going to happen. So everybody know that we are not going to be invaded. It's just how? How would that happen? Just out of curiosity. I mean, there would have to be a massive nuclear war, and you're going to invade what? Because you're probably the only people who survive are very few and far between, uh, and even then, the survivors here are going to be locked and loaded. So, at that point, take it. <laughs> What's left of it? Three two three five three eight twenty four twenty three at Chad Benson Show is your Twitter. Tweet at us, text the program. We like to get woke on Wednesdays because being woke is fun. And and I always find this to be interesting. You know, the our, they've got kids over there who are fighting for everything in the world, right? Their existence, their mere existence as, as human beings, let alone Ukrainians, they're fighting for. And we have a bunch of entitled snots who live here who think only of themselves and think only about things like, well, this is what I want, or here's my my gender identity. You better respect it or else, because they have grown up in such privilege. We all have. That they have no idea how great it is. And then you hear stuff like this. So just because I don't work or contribute to society in any way doesn't mean I shouldn't have ever. So just because you do nothing to contribute to anything society whatsoever doesn't mean that you shouldn't have everything you want because you deserve. And it's that word deserve. But this is what happens when you coddle. This is what happens when you when you hand over things to children and allow them to make decisions and to act as if everything is is their destiny, regardless of how hard they work at it. And it's insane. It is. Again, we're sitting here fighting over gender pronouns and 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 wokeness and tweets and all of these things. And they're fighting for their life. And we are so blessed. I have a really proud moment that I want to share. So I'm a long distance parent and I get to typically talk to my kiddo through FaceTime. And we've been working on my pronouns for probably about a year now. Everyone that she's with on a regular basis doesn't use my pronouns correctly. Um, and so that's a really, really hard sort of like line to walk for her. What? You're spending your time on your on your FaceTime with your kid, uh, long distance pronoun. And it's weird that you, you know, in the day and age when you think, oh, don't women always get the kids? Obviously not, probably because of the pronoun crap. But we do talk about it. We talk about pronouns. We talk about, you know, what her pronouns are, what daddy's pronouns are, what mommy's pronouns are, what other people's pronouns are. And we just like really work through it. I always just gently remind her and say, hey, baby, what are mommy's pronouns? And she's so funny because she's always like, they, them. 
Like, she knows. <laughs> My God. They, them. What's your pronouns? I'm dad. That's my pronoun. This really sweet thing happened where she was going to tell her dad something and used my pronouns correctly without me needing to remind her. Like, did it all by herself. And I just, oh, my heart was so full. It felt like my child, like, actually saw me for just that moment. Simple as that. Hey, Dad, they them's on the phone, and they them is crazy as a crap house rat. <laughs> Thank God she's a long-distance parent. They them is nuts. Uh, puts it in perspective, right? Shelling's going on outside. Well, what's our pronouns? <laughs> they them got shelled. 323-538-2423. At Chad Benson Show, your Twitter Tweet at us, text the program. Uh, major NFL moves yesterday, which I found to be very interesting. Talk about that. Plus, we got an awesome job alert. First, let me tell you about my friends over at Car Shield. Cars are more expensive. Inflation's going through the roof. Uh, you're trying to hold on to your car for as long as you can. And in many cases, you don't have a warranty anymore. That's where Car Shield comes in. America's number one auto protection company. 24 7 roadside assistance. A rental car for free while your car's in the shop. That shop, kids, the shop that you choose, they get them paid directly. They take care of the paperwork. You pay a small deductible and away you go. That's what I love about Car Shield is what they do for you. They have plans that fit every single budget. And in and, and, and a rising cost of everything, including labor, why not protect yourself? Absolutely. So do what I did and millions have done. Get yourself Car Shield. Go to carshield.com slash Benson right now. There you're going to save 10%. Simple and easy. Carshield.com slash Benson. Carshield.com slash Benson saves you 10%. A deductible may apply. Chad Benson Show. You stink like fear and white male privilege to me. I do often out myself verbally as a gender. My pronouns are they, them, and I'm proud to be a gender. Are you stupid? <laughs> Ruben! What? Are you kidding me? Not a great way to use your white privilege. Some people get it. Some people don't. You're listening to The Chad Benson Show. We have an enormous NFL trade in which Seattle and Denver have agreed to a trade that will send Russell Wilson to the Denver Broncos for a package of picks and players, seven assets Seattle is acquiring in return for the nine-time Pro Bowl quarterback who has to pass his physical and still has to waive his no-trade clause, which he is expected to do. You take a look at what Seattle's getting in return. Drew Locke, Noah Fan, Shelby Harris, double ones, double twos. This is the foundation. Yep. They gave, uh, uh, it was crazy sitting here because earlier in the day, right, it was confirmed that uh, this character is coming back to the NFL. Aaron Rodgers confirmed today in a tweet as he had told Pat McAfee earlier in the day that he has decided to return to Green Bay. They're still sifting through his contract. They are expected to get it worked out. It is not worked out yet, as Aaron Rodgers pointed out in his tweet. But Aaron Rodgers has decided to return to Green Bay for an 18th season. Yeah, I don't know how much it's going to be, uh, but it's a lot apparently. Somewhere in the neighborhood of two hundred million. Like, Chitiki's going to come back. One hundred fifty-three million guaranteed. Probably gets you to come back to a lot of things, and uh, that's good. And then you had the blockbuster trade where Seattle got all of Denver back in all their first-round draft picks and second-round draft picks for Russell Wilson, which could be weird because he's going to have to pass the ball to himself. But whatever. So that's like, I was like, man, even when NFL, it shows you like the power of the NFL, not playing, dominating the news, playing or should be playing, but in the middle of a, of a, of a, of a, a lockout and nobody cares. Baseball. Those guys might need a job soon. And if you want a job, we got a job for you kids. It's time for the great job of the week. Wanted, this is real, Grizzly Bear Conflict Manager. Ho, ho, ho. 
Oh, yeah, this job's going to suck. All right, so you're going to work for the U.S. government. Uh, now, here's the salary, 79000 to 103000 uh, It's not a mundane job, though, kids, and you're not going out to referee grizzly fights. So already I was like, ah. What you are going to do is be in the woods. You're going to be in the forest. You're going to be in the elements. You're going to be sleeping outside. You're going to be going and surveying and finding out where territorial issues and quarrels occur between humans and bears, farmers, things of that na- nature. You know, want them eating all the livestock. And you're going to be going out there and spending substantial amounts of time in the field, walking on wet, rocky, and otherwise harsh terrain, sometimes requiring the use of boats, small aircraft, and all-terrain vehicles. You can be within 100 miles of uh, Missoula, Bozeman, or Kalispell in Montana. Uh, you'll work with a staff of two to four, and uh, you have to be able to carry at least 50 pounds of weight with you. So be prepared, kids, but the opportunity to get into the wilderness, make 100 grand, that's a pretty good gig, and it's the government, so you need great bennies. Just saying. Chad Benson Show. This is the Chad Benson Show. Independent thoughts, independent life. This is Chad Benson. Biden finally decided to do something we should have done early on that we did not do. And uh, he took a step. The UK did it as well. But yesterday, of course, if you didn't pay any attention. We're banning all imports of Russian oil and gas and energy. That means Russian oil will no longer be acceptable at U.S. ports and the American people will deal another powerful blow to Putin's war machine. This is a move that has strong bipartisan support in the Congress and I believe in the country. Americans have rallied to support their Ukrainian people and made it clear we will not be part of subsidizing Putin's war. I think it's the right thing to do. I think a majority of Americans are also echoing that statement. This was, this was it. This is the right thing. The latest Quinnipiac poll showing 71 percent of Americans support banning Russian oil, even if it means higher prices here at the pump. It's something I heard from drivers today who acknowledged they are already stretched thin and hoping for some relief soon. Yeah, that's not going to happen. You're not going to see that relief uh, coming anytime soon. It is going to get uglier. But the reality is it's the right thing to do. There are things that we should be doing that we should have been taking, once this really started to pick up pace, we should have been moving in a, in a, in a different direction. But all that being said, there's so much we can do. You can't force oil companies to drill. Oil companies were doing okay, doing really well. Then, all of a sudden, the bottom fell out of the oil business, and it became untenable to continue to produce oil at the rate that we were doing, with the price point where it was, because every time you'd pull a you know barrel oil out of the ground, you were losing X amount of dollars, and that's yeah. You know, I don't know if you guys are aware of that that's stupid. <laughs> that's the way that works. Oil companies right now are enjoying this. They made a ton of money. They had cash put away. They were they were going and they're doing leverage buybacks. They were buying back their stock. They're keeping stuff in, in cash, and they weren't getting into the position where they were going to be chasing and drilling like they were before. Then when oil shot up, as it has, they're sitting pretty. So we have to make decisions here, as does the president, of which one of them is, are we going to deal with Venezuela? The other one is the the phone call to Saudi Arabia and the United Arab Emirates, of which both MBS and the uh, leader of the United Arab Emirates did not take our call. So Venezuela may be the next thing that we're we're working on. I know that we were sending a delegation over there to to discuss some stuff to see if they could turn the spigot on as well. But I don't know if that's going to get a lot done. And this is where we are at this moment in time. It's not forever. It isn't. But it doesn't mean uh, that anytime soon things are going to get better.
There's domestic production, certainly, that can be a part of that. Uh, there's this conversation about OPEC, perhaps the United States speaking with some very controversial parties like Venezuela and Saudi Arabia to make up the supply shortage. Of course, there's the potential for the release from the strategic petroleum reserves. We've already done that twice in the last six months. That has a temporary influence over the price you pay. But the bottom line is when you take out supply, you're going to face higher prices. And that is exactly what Americans are seeing right now. Yeah. And then you couple that with speculators who will go and speculate. They'll get into the marketplace of throwing money at it, which will also push stuff temporarily higher. Uh, But this is kind of what we've got at this moment in time. Now, today, oil is off a bit. It is sitting at about a doll, uh, 122 bucks a barrel. Yesterday got up as high as, I want to say like 130 something. So it's off a little bit, down about six bucks today. But a lot of that is probably what they would call uh, profit taking from the speculator side of stuff. So we'll see. We'll see what is next. But for us, expect higher prices, expect inflation to continue to push through. And even if you see things stay here for a while, you're still going to notice that things are going to go up and you're going to go why? Because this stuff was, some of it was built in already. And what we're seeing is kind of a seven to 10 day lag before it hits you at the pump. I paid 339 last Monday. I paid 429 yesterday when I left the house this morning, drove by the station, drive by every day. It was 439. So in the space of a little over eight and a half days, it had gone up one dollar oh. ugly luckily we've got good people working on it this is energy secretary jennifer granholm when you hear this you'll think to yourself we're doomed what is the granholm plan to increase oil production in america <laughs> oh my god <laughs> that is hilarious. Would that I had the magic wand on this. As you know, of course, uh, oil is a global market. It is controlled by a cartel. That cartel is called OPEC. And they made a decision yesterday that they were not going to increase beyond what they were already planning. <laughs> that is our energy secretary. That that That's 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 what. Uh, we've got facing us what a nightmare what a nightmare again we're not getting off of 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 this stuff the way that people think right it's just it's not happening it's not so if you think that magically tomorrow people are going to run out and buy i don't know green vehicles which aren't very green, by the way. The batteries are horrible. The way that they get many of the stuff they use is bad for the environment. And let's not forget the fact that it also takes electricity, of which a good portion of that is powered by coal, which isn't great either. But you know what? As long as you're driving something where it makes you feel good. And expensive, right? It's like, Are you going out tomorrow and buying a Tesla? Probably not. I mean, you can find some okay ones, not Teslas, but a few cars that are, but they're not all great. They're not. They're not. So it's not changing anytime soon, which means things are going to go up. We will get better before, you know, too long. I'm assuming by the end of the year, we'll be back down into, like for us, that $3 range, $3.20, like where, where it was last week. California might be down in that mid four dollar range across the country. We'll be seeing those, you know, low to mid threes, maybe in some high twos. But it's not going to be an overnight thing where magically all of a sudden the spigots open. This this is going to get worse before it gets better, but it will get better. All that being said, the reason all this is going on, because there is. Yes, a war still going on. And war, it's, it's, it's an invasion. And it's becoming an, an annihilation because Putin's getting desperate. When Putin gets desperate, what does he do? He starts to hit out. And that's the big thing that people are worried about. Putin's getting desperate and he's starting to hit out. He's starting to, to say, screw it. At this point in time, let's just start bombing everything we possibly can. And that's kind of what's going on over there. And, and, and that's the fear 
of what we're going to to be seeing, especially when it comes to things like letting people out for humanitarian reasons and saying, oh, yeah, let's let him do that. And then we'll blow him up. Well, that is what a Russian ceasefire sounds like. We're on the outskirts of the town of Irpin. We've been hearing the sound of bombardment over the last hour as civilians try to get out, as ambulances try and go in and rescue people, as they try and use the opportunity to get out of the town and to safety. But still, there are dangers. Still, there's bombardment. Yeah, we're sending in Patriot missiles. We are not sending them jets, which is what everybody thought we were going to be doing because yesterday it seemed like jets were on the way uh in a weird kind of poland flies into ram I'm, and then a ramstein air force base and then then apparently the ukrainians get them and then i it was it was very convoluted and everybody's like oh we're going to start giving them jets and it weren't, they were migs like soviet era migs and then it was like well, hold on a second wait a minute you you want us to replenish your migs with F-16. Well, used ones. We'd like gently used. The Biden administration is now rejecting Poland's plan to arm Ukrainian forces with more air power. On Tuesday, the Polish government, in a major surprise to U.S. officials, announced it is ready to transfer more than two dozen MiG-29s to U.S. forces in Germany, with the understanding the fighter jets would be handed over to Ukraine, and the U.S. would then replenish Poland's arsenal with American-made jets. But the Pentagon says the idea is not tenable, citing concerns that it could further inflame tensions between Russia and NATO and drag the U.S. into the war. Yeah, which is what nobody wants. And so that's kind of where we are right now. Luckily, today, uh, the 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 master of words. Right. The the woman who can tie things together like nobody is business is heading over to Poland to sort this out. Of course, I'm talking about the vice president of the United States, Kamala Harris. Imagine a future, the freight trucks that deliver bread and milk to our grocery store shelves and the buses that take children to school and, and parents to work. Imagine all the heavy duty vehicles that keep our supply lines strong and allow our economy to grow. Imagine that they produced zero emissions. We have the ability to see what can be unburdened by what has been and then to make the possible actually happen. Yeah, we're doomed. Wouldn't you say, uh, Vice President? It is time for us to do what we have been doing, and that time is every day. Man, fantastic. She's great. She's got more for us, too. We must together work together hmm? to see where we are, you know where saying? we are headed, okay. where we are going, and our vision for where we should be. I'm excited. But also see it as a moment, yes, to together yes. address the challenges okay. and to work on the opportunities. Very, very exciting. Yeah. Fantastic. Three two three five three eight twenty four twenty three at Chad Benson shows your Twitter tweet at us text the program uh, yeah so they're fighting hard over there you know they're fighting hard desperation we we'll talk to Mike Lyons at the bottom of the hour find out what what's going on uh, how close are they to Kiev uh, you know what else is there for us to do uh, and there's still the weird question about the the military itself. If I've read several articles the last couple of days and talked to several people, and I want to get Mike's perspective on this, our military analyst is uh, during their rebuild that a majority of the money that flowed to the military ended up in the pockets of guys who have 700 foot yachts and not really into any of the stuff. And because of that, you're finding out that they bought cheap crap that doesn't work. And it was more about oligarchs getting paid than it was about actually rearming the military with anything modern. Three two three five three eight twenty four twenty three at Chad Benson Show Twitter. Rough Greens makes any pet food better. Give it to my dogs every single day. Wake up in the morning, wife uh, she feeds them. She puts uh, Rough Greens on top of their foods. It's a supplement. It's a little. It's just powder. Shoo. It's just, just a pinch. Shoo. It's got vitamins, minerals, probiotics, make a 369. It brings the food that we give them to life, right? So we go, we get them their regular food. We don't change anything. And it has helped my dogs with their joint pain. It's helped my dogs with their energy, their digestive systems. And it's been so amazing for their fur in a time when, you know, it's kind of allergy season. They've had zero allergies, and that is amazing. Right now, Rough Greens wants you to try it before you buy it, and it's simple. You go to ruffgreens.com slash Chad. That's roughgreens.com slash Chad. You cover the cost of shipping. They send you a bag. 
absolutely free. You can also call them at 833-MY-DOG-77, 833-MY-DOG-77. Rough Greens makes any pet food better. Chad Benson Show. Set Chad straight. Text the show, 323-538-2423. That's 323-538-CHAD. Someone has to do it. Might as well be you. The Chad Benson Show. Five, four, three, two, one, zero. Ignition, lift off. Now it's time to find out what's trending. What's trending? Yeah, what does that mean? I mean something, right? Like it's trending on the old internet. What's trending? Let's take a peek, find out what's trending on the old interweb. Start over on uh, the uh, Google. Russell Wilson yesterday. Biggest trending thing. Two million searches for both Russell Wilson and the Russell Wilson trade. Spotify. Users reported widespread access issues. Apple unveiled its M1 Ultra, which is not the MK Ultra, as our good buddy, producer Phil, pointed out to me. I'm like, didn't we already do this? Don't say gay, Bill, which is uh, such, it's so, it is hilarious when you hear the, because, you know, the media, it's like, oh, yeah, they're going after this. And, and then you read the bill, and you're like, well, that's not true, and that's not true, and that's not true, that's not true, that's not true. Uh, but that's where we live today. That's it. Biden. Sign executive order uh, to basically go, how do we look at crypto and how can we regulate it? Because we want it to be awful. They're going to turn it into Facebook where all the old people are. <laughs> look, I got a digital wallet. That's not very nice, Chad. I'm just saying, kids. And of course, the Ukrainian invasion is also riding high on the Google searches. Head over to Twitter where everybody's arguing about everything. Executive order, as we were just talking about, with crypto. Huge, huge. The wreck of the endurance. Ernest Shackleton's ship has been found in the Wendell Sea, about 10,000 feet below. Shackleton was a famous explorer that kind of only partially explored. He started, but never really finished well. It's probably the best way to describe it. But he was famous for getting all 28 of his men home after being stuck in ungodly conditions and they were ungodly that's for sure kids that's for sure uh, russell wilson trade still trending as well man that's crazy right like that's pretty they traded away uh like that puts denver i was saying yesterday and again i'll go back to my little football stuff that i'll talk about so you have the division now in the afc west that has the worst quarterback is Derek carr who's pretty much top probably 15 10 quarterback in the nfl maybe russell wilson Herbert and Patrick Mahomes. Good luck. That'll be fun. That'll be fun, kids. And Wordle, it's always. People are now cheating at Wordle. Oh, God. Oh, God. They're cheating at the Wordle. <sighs> How do you even cheat at Wordle? I don't know. I've not played Wordle. I've not. I see, like, everybody around here is talking about Wordle. And I'm doing my best to not play it. So... I'm doing my best. Like, if you want to play a full game of Yahtzee, I'm on. Let's do it. But the Wordle thing, nah, I'm going to give it a hard pass. 323-538-2423. At Chad Benson Show is your Twitter. Are they bogged down? Are they waiting to strike? Uh, is this really the new and improved Russian military? Talk about it. Get the latest. Mike Lyons, our military analyst, joins us straight ahead. It's the Chad Benson Show. Chad Benson Show. Independent thoughts, independent life. This is Chad Benson. He has been with us uh, since before it started, and he's walking us through all of the stuff and actually giving us real 
stuff like that to to, go, to to let us sink in and information that's real. As retired U.S. Army Major and military analyst Mike Lyons and uh, Mike, we were joking off the air that you know that, that when you've done a lot of hits with a lot of these big news networks, the CNNs and everybody's, they're like, well, why can't we do this and why can't we do that? Uh, because, you know, the perfect example is the yesterday, a lot of people are like, well, we're going to give them planes by not giving them planes. How is that going to work? Yeah, it, it's um, a lot a lot of examples that people are trying to put out there. Creative, I'll give it to them, but um, they just really haven't thought them through. It's almost like they're putting them out there first. Um, you know, anything that we get involved with, we get our fingerprints too far in. We have to recognize that it's going to escalate with on the side of Russia. And Finally, we got this, uh, you know, the Polish called us out on it. They, they said, OK, we're going to send 29 MiGs to Ramstein and you guys are going to get them all set up for us because they really don't have that capability to restripe them and figure them out radio wise. All the things that have to go into those planes in order for them to be Ukrainian aircraft. And then and then we'll eventually fly them back and then we'll fly them over the border. It just and the Pentagon, of course, said you just can't get there from here. So, you know, it, we're back to square one. There's no fly zone going to happen if. It's too hard for the Polish government, while it's a great idea to try to give them MiG fighter planes, just because that's the planes that the airframes that those pilots can fly. Uh, so much speculation about the military of Russia is, is somewhat of a paper tiger uh, that and then on the other side of it, it's people who are like, yeah, Putin's got him where he wants him and he's going to exact his 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 evil here sooner rather than later and they're going to win. I think the truth is somewhere in between. I think the oligarchs stole a bunch of money and the stuff that they're supplied with probably isn't what he thought it was. Uh, but I still think they're a formidable force. Yeah, there's no question they are. And they bring size and mass as a principle of war to the table. Um, it's just right now, the, the other principle of war of maneuver, they right now are maneuvering like pond water. They're just really not moving. That might be on purpose. I, I don't know. It, it it's, uh, has a lot to do with um, how bad their equipment is actually operating. And maybe they can't, uh, you know, kind of launch out and get, you know, kind of kind of break out, so to speak, as the military term would be. But um, but but they bring mass and they bring a lot of equipment to the table. Twelve hundred main battle tanks right now, I think it was in its original count uh, as what was in the invasion force. Um, BMPs, B, BTRs, uh, ZSU 23s, every every single thing in their inventory is in that battlefield. And there's a lot of them. And there's a lot of those things to kill in order for you to claim victory over them. Whether or not the Ukraine military can kind of find them all and do that really remains to be seen because they're outgunned. They're outnumbered. Uh, a lot of things still going against them, and that's why, you know, kind of at the end of this, they'll 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 scorch the earth, and the Russians will take a lot of casualties. But um, there's no substitute for mass uh, when it comes to, uh, you know, fighting a war like this. So I look at that and I think to myself, you know, we're sending them Patriot missiles, and you know that defense system we found out, you know, that didn't really work as well as we were told. Uh, it, they're probably it's probably better now. But the reality is to win this thing, or at least to make this thing even more untenable uh, and to turn it into more of a occupation rather than than a, their blitzkrieg slash war, is you have to turn it into a street fight. At some point, though, he's going to turn the street fight into an air fight. It's been weird, right, how silent their, their planes have been uh, in not doing what I think a lot of people thought they were going to do. It has been. And first of all, I think the Patriots is a good idea. They should have been in Poland and, and Lithuania and Estonia a long time ago. I think that those are forward looking um, platforms that provide great defense. Um, and if they had to be turned on to fly over Ukraine, they, <clears throat> they could be. But um, but that's a good thing. But yes, there's no, here we are almost two weeks into this. And the fact that there's air parity over Ukraine is unthinkable for a superpower. That, that's where, again, their military has fallen down at the operational tactical level. I just don't get it on, on why they haven't taken out Ukraine's military while it was on the ground. Why can't they hunt down those planes? Why can't they find out uh, the, the anti-ballistic missile systems are? But the key is the Stingers. Uh, 2,500 Stingers showed up um, on the battlefield in the last uh, six or seven days, or and, and, and they've gotten into the right people's hands. And I'll tell you, the, kind of the pucker factor for those MiG pilots now is going way up, not knowing where that, that uh, round's going to come from. And that's a fire and forget round. And you can just, you know, kind of, you know, kind of right, right. You know, get your coffin ready because you're not you're not escaping out of it. You're not going to be able to get away from that Stinger rocket that um, was so successful, has been so successful on the battlefield. 
You know, uh, talking to Michael Lyons, our military analyst, who's been with us through this entire, uh, well, even pre-invasion uh, of Russia. And uh, the I read a great article the other day that the, the, the stuff that much of what the Russians have is super subpar in a nation that was supposed to be rebuilding for the last two decades, their military. And on top of that, they've got this centralized situation where uh, the they're they're not making any decisions on the ground. It's it has to go up through the chain of command all the way back at the Kremlin. And they're not there. That's not helping them at all. Correct. There's so many different things from their industrial military complex that that shows you that they're just really not that superpower again they bring mass to the table they throw a lot of things out they never they don't throw things out Uh, there's lots of equipment that sits behind the ural mountains that they can still throw at you but at the end of the day the fact that we can um, take a hundred thousand dollar let's say javelin and have it knock off the top uh, of a of a five or six million dollar tank uh, than their side it's just inexcusable. But thanks, the thing's poorly made, and it's made that way because of the corruption that exists inside of Russia and, and how it's the shortcuts are taken in the design. But then how they actually fight and how once they get, you know, kind of get down on the ground, we could see that there's no small unit initiative that takes place. If there's one thing that we have in our military is uh, initiative that takes place by the lieutenants, by the captains, by the sergeants on the ground to, you know, fight as infantry when required. I, I, there, there's not a single military officer in our, in our army would be sitting on a 40 mile convoy sitting on a road waiting for something to happen we'd be dispersed off that road those assets would be protected in some manner so there's no protection of the force and i think that's a big difference between how we fight and how they fight and we projected on how we would we would fight this and that's why they've done so poorly because we could sit there and say we we would have we would have been there in three days if we had to uh, we move from there to the leaders. Uh, Zelensky is coming across as Churchill-esque. He's been thrust into this, and and he has taken to it as best that he possibly can, as best as anybody can. And then he's exceeded those things, and the people are following him. Putin, on the other hand, uh, his people are starting to realize, and we've been saying this for a while, you're realizing you're becoming North Korea. North Korea doesn't know they're North Korea and shunned from the world. These people are figuring this out. And the economic side of stuff, I think, is going to hit him harder than even the body count for the average person, especially under 40. Yeah, I I think there's a lot of truth to that. And the economics are not hitting just yet. I think um, that's going to really be a lag indicator. And let's say something's changed tomorrow. It'd be difficult to kind of, again, flip the switch and and kind of get back to normal with that. Um, My friends that are Russian that have relatives back in Russia tell me that um, they think that things are going well in Ukraine, that they have no idea of what's going on. Um, the propaganda machine from that direction to the, to the east, uh, from him his, his side on, he's done a pretty good job at. But I don't think he's winning the information war uh, to the west and with the rest of the world. And I think that's, that's, the, that's the thing that's uh, so up in the air right now. Um, but, but, it, but, but the key here too is keep NATO out of it because if, if, if it does become a NATO fight, uh, that will mobilize the Russian citizen. That will make them want to sacrifice. That will put them all through the great war. He's gone through history now, Vladimir Putin, in terms of how he's gotten to this spot. Um, that would be something he would try to mobilize on. And that, that's why it's so important to keep all NATO fingerprints off these operations. Could that be desperation at some point saying, I need the people to get on my side. I need it to make it look like the West versus us. And I'm going to make a move that would force the hand of NATO to get involved. And therefore, I can turn the tide of the people going against me. You know, that's a great question. Great point. And I think that we have to be smart about that. And if he does that, so let's say worst possible case, he doesn't, I don't think he's got the capability now, but let's say he turned his sights on Estonia and Lithuania and those Baltic states, we still would not necessarily respond right away. I think that's what, what the key would be here. It, first of all, it would take us a while to muster the kind of forces in order to eject them from there. So I, I think that he's hoping in some ways that we do have some kind of knee jerk response that we do something like put in a no fly zone. And the next thing you know, we have air to air conflict between us and Russia. And next and next thing you know, we've we've lit the fuse. So uh, so, again, we've got to be really very smart with this and, and, and keep our powder dry. It, it is a really difficult to watch the atrocities being created there. 
But at the end of the day, this is a regional conflict. We just haven't had in history a superpower with that kind of military might do this. In the past, these were fought by proxy. In this case, it's the superpower itself. I get asked this question probably 10 times a day, uh, the nuclear option. Could he get to a point where he sees no out and there is no, there's no, he's not going to be Lenin in the streets. He's not going to be Stalin. There's not going to be giant, huge, you know, bronze statues and stuff and, and, you know, kids singing songs about him. Is there a point where he sees there's, there's no out for him and he does something desperate and it doesn't have to be a NATO. He could, you know, a small tactical in, in the Ukraine somewhere uh, uh, to, to shake the world. Is there a point where that might be real? Yeah, I think so. I think that that's likely the last straw that he, he could play b- before we decide the world does decide. And, and that's maybe six months or so, you know, from a time and space perspective, but I, I think so. I, I, and because, you know, we've watched him violate all these norms and we, you know, we've kind of gotten away with it, but that then crosses a very, bright line and and sure he takes a, a 15 kiloton um, nuclear weapon and, and launches it over a city and kills 50,000 100,000 people Ukrainian citizens I, I do think then the world would have to um, deliver some kind of ultimatum to him uh, with that and, and then you know kind of brace for for what could happen then but that that might be the bright line that does change uh, involvement you think China would switch off in a heartbeat if they, he did something like that? And do and you think that they would go, all right, well, that's a bridge too far even for us? Well, I, you know, th- you bring that up because I, I think that that's the other disappointment in our government and how we've handled this diplomatically and how we don't have back channels right now to the Chinese saying, listen, you better get your attack dog on a leash. You, get, you better get this thing under control here because the same sanctions that were going on in Russia, we're going to shut down all those Walmarts here and, and you guys are going to be toast too. And, I, and, I, and it's got to, the fact that we have other nations not involved with this is a real diplomatic failure uh, on our side. And it just comes down to legitimacy. Um, you know, a, a guy like George Bush, when, when he did Desert Storm, when he got the 29 nations on board to kick the Iraqis out of Kuwait. And that was just because of the diplomacy of James Baker and the people we had there. We just don't have the seriousness anymore of our diplomats in order to have made those relationships to make these kind of things happen. But there's no question that, and I want to say if we're going down, but if we're going to get wrapped into this and so are the Chinese and, and they, they better had stepped up and get their vassal state, which is going to be Russia. That's the sad thing about this whole thing. Russia is now going to become a vassal state of the Chinese. Uh, last, uh, question, uh, Kiev, when, when, when does that battle really start to become that battle? Cause the tanks have disappeared. Nobody knows where some of these things are. It feels like now that everybody's braced and they're almost in quote unquote position, uh, by this weekend, are we going to start to see that that thing start to just pop off? So as I read the military, um, analysis of that from like the Institute of study of war, they're keep, they say 24 to 48 hours. I, I'm not sure how they're predicting that. I think that Kiev becomes more of a strangle. I think it becomes more of a siege. I don't see the, the fact every day that goes by, the Ukraine military has opportunities to put more needles in the porcupine. And, they, they, and they've done that. And they've the hedgehogs and the things that they're doing uh, inside the city. Now, it's going to take a lot of work once they have to peel it all away. Uh, but the bottom line is, I, I just, you know, again, the, the 17,000 javelins, all that stuff is in there. It's kind of ready to go. I, I don't see them being successful. Now, if they decide to go indirect fire and, and try to level the city, then, um, you know, again, the, the, I, I, they'll, they'll, they'll survive it. They'll get down. They'll, uh, they'll, they'll, they'll work through. They'll just, you know, there'll be a lot of death and destruction. But, I, you know, I, I, it's hard to say because in the same token, we thought he would take Odessa by now. And the reason why he hasn't taken Odessa, maybe, if this is last out, Odessa is that, that city on the Black Sea in the south. Because let's say if he does want to have some kind of negotiation, he wants to bring it back to G-5 and say he's going to keep these areas in Crimea and the Donbass region. He knows full well that Ukraine can't agree to having a country that doesn't have at least a port city. And so that's why he's going to maybe acquiesce, live him, give him Odessa, and, and that's why that city might hasn't been attacked right now. Crazy. Michael Lyons, love having you on, my man. We'll talk to you soon. He's our military analyst, uh, re- retired uh, major in the Army, and uh, you uh, you hit it always, all the right notes. Appreciate it, man. Thanks, Chad. Thanks for having me. 
At Chad Benson Show, Twitter, C-H-A-D-B-E-N-S-O-N. Always good to have Mike on. He, gets, uh, he, he knows a little bit more than we do, and that's always a, that's always a good thing. Chad Benson Show. Check out our Chad Benson Show Facebook page where you can hang out or hang your grievances out to dry. This is Chad Benson. If you missed any of the Mike Lyons interview, uh, grab that podcast, Chad Benson Show podcast. Brilliant. And I love, you know, again, we, we go back to China and he said something great in there, which is China. Why don't we have a backdoor to China where we're talking to real people who understand that this is ugly for the world? And that this could hurt them in a major way and to get their dog on the leash. But we don't. We don't. We don't. And he talks about the desperation, too, of what potentially may be Putin six, seven months down the road. And him taking a, you know, just getting so frustrated and doing something tactical with a nuke, killing several thousand to 70,000, 100,000 people. And then the world has to do something, even though, you know, we've done everything we could to stay out of it at that point in time, which would be scary. It absolutely would. 323-538-2423. At Chad Benson Show is your Twitter. I saw that she was being sued, and my assumption was, well, she must have stole something from Marvin Gaye. But no, Dua Lipa, you're in trouble potentially for something else. I've heard both songs, and it sure sounds like you stole it. The first lawsuit filed by a Florida reggae band called Article Sound System, claiming 2020's levitating is a ripoff of their 2017 song, Live Your Life. The second lawsuit filed on Friday claims levitating is substantially similar to the 1979 song Wiggle and Giggle All Night, written by L. Russell Brown and Sandy Linzer. I was walking down the street when I saw the handsome soldier boy winkle, winkle, winking at me. For comparison, if you want to run away with me, I know a galaxy and I can take you a ride. The complaint saying, quote, the notes move in the same direction with evenly matched intervals or steps and almost identical rhythms. It also points out that Dua Lipa has given multiple interviews saying that she drew inspiration from past disco era songs while writing this album. I will say, I don't know about the other one where they're saying it does sound familiar, the one with the, the her singing and the other one. But when she does the chorus, this... And then this band that she said, that they're saying, hey, you stole it from us. Yeah, not even close. <laughs> How much do you want? Should be the answer. 323-538-2423, at Chad Benson Show, Twitter. If you missed any of this exciting hour or any of the program, grab the podcast, Chad Benson Show, and get it. Tune in, iTunes, Spotify, and wherever great podcasts are available for free. Chad Benson Show. This is the Chad Benson Show. Independent thoughts, independent life. This is Chad Benson. These recent studies found that the uh, transition causes um, uh, cumulative sleep loss and, uh, and may result in more heart attacks and uh, mood disorders. Damn Skippy, Jan uh, Sawalski, Democrat, Illinois. Daylight savings coming up this weekend. States have voted on it. They get rid of it. Why are we doing this still? We will likely experience an almost seamless change as our phones now have the ability to reset the time on their own. I say almost seamly. Because while this transition may be easy for our devices, it is not so much for our bodies. Yeah. That is Gus uh, Bilirakis, Republican, Florida. 
I'm all for it. Now, I'm blessed because I live in uh, Arizona and we don't change times. Uh, but I do. It's weird for me because so my show is on from a certain time. So it's weird for part of the year. I do it an hour different and then I got to come back next week and, and you know, back to what would be the regular time. It's 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 bizarre. And uh, but it still causes me because of the way that I work to have to, for all intents and purposes, still have to go through the falling back and moving forward. And so next week, up earlier than normal, and as you guys know, my ass is up extra early. Depending on where you're hearing this, my shows are uh, like uh, 6 a.m. Pacific. So, And I like to put a lot of work in. So I like to come to this show empty-handed, kids. I'm all for, I think most people are for it. Right. I think most people are like, ah, again, tell us why we're doing this, because uh, we are what? Because, well, we, you know, we started doing it and then we just kind of kept that way and we're still kind of doing it. So, you know, and we'd have to go and Congress would have to do something. Yeah, just let's just get it done. OK, don't bring me problems. Bring me solutions. Three two three five three eight twenty four twenty three at Chad Benson Show is your Twitter tweet at us text the program. Uh, Ukraine nightmare as usual. Ceasefire kind of working. It seems it's more effective today. It seems the Russians are taking it a little bit more seriously. But we are hearing anecdotally piecemeal information about some of these corridors seeing some fighting or having fighting nearby. It's too early in the day to be able to tell fully the result of this. But clearly there is a massive need for civilians to get out of those areas farther in the east yeah and that's the you know uh, what like what the hell are you doing like what in god's name are you doing where well, you're bombing civilians we can ask that you know if you're if, if your goal is because your people are finding out you know that the vpn game is strong in russia and the younger generation is finding out what's going on the older generation isn't going to be as affected by I think the financial side of things, and I mean the mid fifties to the the latter years of their life, uh, and and smaller enclaves and villages or villages that are out there, they're not going to be. But the 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 working class folk in big cities and small cities, they're feeling this more, and you start to take away financial freedom, and you crack down on on having an expression of freedom then things start to get south fast. And I think that's what the world is hoping for, that inside this thing can break him. Probably not going to happen, not anytime soon. Yesterday we took an extraordinary step that should have happened weeks ago. Uh, Once we, the minute we, I mean, the minute he launched 13 days ago, this should have been the first thing done besides the swift. We have not been swift in some of the things that we have done. And part of that is the fact that we're also participating in a way where European countries are feeling the brunt of of some of this in a different way compared to us. But Biden made a step yesterday that was the right step. We're banning all imports of Russian oil and gas and energy. That means Russian oil will no longer be acceptable at U.S. ports and the American people will deal another powerful blow to Putin's war machine. This is a move that has strong bipartisan support in the Congress and, I believe, in the country. Americans have rallied to support their Ukrainian people and made it clear we will not be part of subsidizing Putin's war. Yeah, which is good. Now, we haven't hit the commodities uh, on the other side of it, which is wheat, which is wheat is through the roof. Several of the other grains that they produce there, uh, which is something, again, it goes back to, it's not just us in this. And in particular, it's a European fight because the Europeans have, over the last several years and, and decades, have kind of ceded so much of their energy and so much power to a person who everybody said, hey, you guys, this guy's going to turn on everybody one day and have the power to freeze your asses out. We're moving forward with this ban, understanding that many of our European allies and partners may not be in a position to join us. The United States produces far more oil domestically than all the European countries combined. In fact, we're a net exporter of energy. So we can take this step when others cannot. 
But we're working closely with Europe and our partners to develop a long-term strategy to reduce their dependence on Russian energy as well. Yeah. Uh... Now you're getting reports of them smashing and shooting a, a, a hospital, a maternity hospital, crushing that. You got energy prices through the roof. I mean, you know, the more that he does stuff like this, the more that it, it causes nations to say, you know, because let's be real. They're asking everybody, is there a way that we can tell Putin to pack sand and he could just say, fine, we're done. We're not sending you anymore, and we can make it up. In some cases, yeah, but not all cases. And that's why, because if you're a politician and you're a leader in other countries and you're dependent upon these things where you've got people that are counting on you in your nation, uh, you don't want to see some sort of, of disaster. You, just, you can't afford it. And for us, well, we're going to feel it at the pump. That is something that's going to continue to happen. So be prepared. It's it's ugly. It's nasty. It's not going to get better anytime soon. Doesn't mean that we're not going to get out of it. Doesn't mean we're going to have to go out today and drill, 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 drill. Because the reality is it isn't going to happen overnight. What is going to happen is we're going to move in a smarter direction in the coming months. And finally, we're going to have to explain to the green, not in a way of anger and meanness, but reason with them. Hey, first of all, you guys were sold a bill of goods by many Russian bots and people who wanted to tell you that if you drove an SUV, that magically you were killing a penguin every time you turned it on. And they and they appealed to your emotion. Uh, secondly, us continuing to hand money over to the likes of the Saudis, to the likes of Russia, to the likes of many other bad players and actors in the world who would then turn, take that money, and get into de facto wars and try to fight us on other, well, really, in, in any other way they possibly could. If they could get here, they probably would, but they can't. But that's not good. And if I can't appeal to you that way, let me appeal to you this way. They don't care about the environment. So you can have responsible drilling or hateful, angry, non-responsible drilling. Those are your choices. Those are it. But the reality is prices going to go up. We're going to feel it. There's domestic production, certainly, that can be a part of that. Uh, there's this conversation about OPEC, perhaps the United States speaking with some very controversial parties like Venezuela and Saudi Arabia to make up the supply shortage. Of course, there is the potential for the release from the strategic petroleum reserves. We've already done that twice in the last six months. That has a temporary influence over the price you pay. But the bottom line is when you take out supply, you're going to face higher prices, and that is exactly what Americans are seeing right now. Yeah, and, and we're going to be seeing it, and we're going to see it not just at the pump, and, and that's the one thing that we've got to realize, that it, and I think there's a, still a disconnect at times, that it is not solely at the pump that we're going to feel this. We're going to feel this at the grocery store. We're going to feel this. It doesn't matter what we're purchasing. We're going to feel this in the coming weeks and months. It's not going to last forever, but it is going to be here for quite a while, uh, I wouldn't be surprised if we see, you know, prices nationally hang in and around four bucks for a majority of the country for the rest of the year. And in some cases, uh, for the, at least in the foreseeable future, probably get to, I would say, five dollars, if not. Tomorrow we're going to have on a uh, an expert in the commodities world and the oil world who's going to break down a lot of this stuff for us in a, in a, in a simple way of where we can make it up, but still how this is going to really affect us. So uh, it's going to it's gonna be ugly for a while, and we're, we're just going to have to deal with that. Understand, like today, I was driving in today, and uh, again, I get up extra early, uh, and on my way in, it was a situation where the freeway was shut down. Now, I leave my house at like 2.30 or 3 every morning. I'm like, what's that? So it must be either they're working on it, but normally they put signs up for days or there was there was a wrong way driver. 
And I was like, ah, and I get off. And, 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 you know, it took me an extra 10, 15 minutes. And I was sitting there and I'm thinking to myself, like, this is maybe the worst part of my day. Knowing that they're getting shelled and bombed right now. Knowing that people who've done nothing wrong other than just wake up and be Ukrainian are being attacked by a madman who's got some some sort of weird perversion of he believes that he's destined to recreate something. And and this is my worst part of my day? Yeah, I'll be right. And I think we need to, to check that every once in a while. And it's going to be hard because if you're living paycheck to paycheck and you're struggling uh, and this is – you just got basically taxes, a massive amount of taxes thrown at you. But then we can also remember how blessed we are. 323-538-2423. At Chad Benson shows your Twitter. Tweet at us. Car Shield is America's number one auto protection company. They're here to protect you. And they do it in amazing ways to get plans to fit anybody's budget. And by that, I mean anybody's budget. Whether you're looking for something that's going to cover everything and then some with your car or just specific things in your car, they've got plans for you. With them, you get 24-7 roadside assistance, uh, which is awesome. Like a rental car. If you want it for free, you get trip reimbursement, and you get to choose the shop that your car's getting fixed at. They get them paid directly. They'll take care of everything, right? Everything. By that, I mean you pay a small deductible. They're going to take care of the big payment. They're going to do all the paperwork. It's pretty simple. Over a million drivers have been helped by CarShield. Why not protect your wallet, protect your car, and have a little smile on your face and breathe a little easier by getting CarShield? Go to carshield.com slash Benson today. Saves you 10% right there. CarShield.com slash Benson. CarShield.com slash Benson saves you 10%. A deductible may apply. Chad Benson Show. Being antisocial sucks. Hang with Chad's friends on Facebook, The Chad Benson Show. And if you just need some alone time, head on over to Twitter at Chad Benson Show. Either way, we can't wait to meet the real you. The rush hour is much more fatal than the morning rush hour for various reasons. Uh, there's more people on the road. There's more, more alcohol in drivers' bloodstreams. Uh, people are tired and rushing to get home, and that's when they make mistakes. More children are outdoors enjoying unsupervised play, and it leads to lots of accidents. Yeah, the 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 fight is on to get rid of daylight savings. Man, I'm I'm fine with that. Yeah, I, th- I think most of us would be, especially the people who work at like where they still sell cuckoo clocks or clock store. <laughs> it's like, that would be like, oh, that's not a bad idea. Let's get rid of that. That'd be great. Yeah. So. Uh, Again, I got zero problems with it. I think most people would be fine with it. I know some states have voted on it, said, ah, let's get rid of it. And, they, and they've gone and done it in theory, but they haven't done it in reality. They voted, yeah, but they, they're, they're still stuck. So you have to go, and it has to, it's, it's a big thing. And once again, it's, you have to go to the federal government. Who oh, would like to change our, we just like to leave everything the same. The question is, does everybody move forward, right? So you stay where you are or, or you move backwards? When does it happen? We have to have everybody do it at a certain specific time, right? As far as are we going to do it? Because okay, so we're not going to do it this year. We do it next year. Why do we? Because this weekend is coming up, and it just it's a kick in the grundle. Sucks. <laughs> it totally does. Hey, if you need a pep talk, turn to children. If you're frustrated, you can always go to your bedroom, punch a pillow, or cry on it, and just go scream outside. Be grateful for yourself. Dude, live it up. I trust that you can make things right. If you're feeling up high and unbalanced, think of Groundhog. We all really like you. Oh, that's right. You can call this line, and you can press, and these, these, these kindergartens give you a pep talk. So I thought, you know, with this world uh, being as it is, uh, we all really needed to hear from them and their extraordinary advice and their continual joy. We all still have a lot of healing to do, you know, with the current situation in Ukraine. It's really important that we continue to hold this light. Yeah. So I did it earlier and uh, this is what I got. It is. 
It's time for us to do what we have been doing, and that time is every day. Wow. That's amazing. What if she's got more words of wisdom? We must together mm -hmm. work together totally. to see where we are, yeah. where we are headed, totally. where we are going, okay. and our vision for where we should be, mm -hmm. but also see it as a moment, yes, to together mm -hmm. address the challenges and to work on the opportunities. I don't think that kid's the sharpest. It's not very nice. Well, let's hear for some real children. My daughter's three, and she has got the craziest imagination. Jack never had the imagination Charlie has. Charlie's imagination is all over the place, and it's hilarious. I'm having a conversation with her last night, and just what kids say, man. They do say the weirdest things. How was your day at school? It's good. Learned about colors. Uh, that was pretty cool. Uh, and then, uh, and then, uh, then I farted. <laughs> Sounds nice. It's a hell of a day. 323-538-2423. At Chad Benson Show is your Twitter. Tweet at us. Text the program. It is time for us to do what we have been doing, and that time is every day. <laughs> Chad Benson Show. Chad Benson Show. Independent thoughts, independent life. This is Chad Benson. So, out of Mary Poll, apparently the Russians have shelled a children's and maternity hospital because, well, you know, they're asshats. And it goes back to what we talked about the other day. Are they incompetent? Or are they just reckless and don't care? It's probably a little bit in both. It depends on 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 who's doing and running which portion of it. One of the reasons that that people are saying that they are struggling in a tremendous way in certain aspects of this, with in particular a lot of their their hardware and their weapons, is the fact that for two decades oligarchs have pillaged their industrial complex has taken 70 percent they've done essentially what a a nonprofit somebody even get accused of right you give them a million bucks they take nine hundred thousand for operating expenses and then and then they spend a hundred thousand dollars on stuff and we're seeing some of that then you're also hearing stories to the fact that they are completely completely run out of the Kremlin. So nobody on the ground is really making decisions. So even the smallest decision has to be run up a chain. And that's not good. In a way where you're thinking to yourself, you're, you're you know, somebody says, because those guys aren't there. And so somebody says, well, shell this way came from the top and you're like, but that's a hospital. And they don't care. So it's 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 ugly and going to get uglier. I mean, you know, take away the gas side of things, which which we can't do. But understand that inflation and gas, these things are here uh, and they're not going anywhere anytime soon. Take away that aspect of it, looking from the humanitarian side, and it's going to get uglier. It is. And if you missed Mike Lyons, he was on last hour. You can grab the uh, podcast. But he talked about, look, it's six months from now. Desperation gets in. Could Putin at that point unload a tactical nuke inside of a city, you know, in the Ukraine, not, not a NATO country or something, but could he do something like that? Is that something that could happen? Yeah, that's probably more realistic than him just going, screw it, I'm just going to fire everything I've got. But 
to know that you're shelling hospitals, and we've said this, we as humanity and as Americans, when you see dead kids, it changes so many things. It does. It does. You go back and you look at at at, at war. And Vietnam is a perfect example that the media really started once things started to get out. And once we started seeing pictures, pictures of dead women and children, it became a much different story back home. They're not getting that. They don't have that freedom of press. Now, the younger generation may be getting some of it. But the older generation is not. And you're you're still in a situation where it's he he's not there yet where you're thinking oh we're going to topple him that may take that may never happen and if it does that's going to take a, a very long time so the young may see hey we bombed a hospital in Maripol were there were there nazis there were they baby nazis oh they weren't oh it wasn't hitler youth oh it wasn't Where other people, older Russians, they're like, nah, it's a little lie. It's the West lying. It's the West lying. That's what they're doing. Sad. 323-538-2423. At Chad Benson Show is your Twitter. Tweet at us. Text the program. Love hearing from all of you. New York Magazine has this. Why isn't Brittany Griner the biggest sports story in the country? She, of course, is a WNBA star who is currently being used as a pawn but has been arrested uh, for having supposedly hash oil and a vape which is illegal over there and in russia and she faces up to 10 years in jail first pictures were released the other day of her holding a piece of paper uh definitely looked like a hostage video kind of thing and people are like why isn't this the biggest story uh because most people don't know who she is that's that's there you go but she's a superstar, and they're comparing her to like, oh, you know, what about if it's Tom Brady, and 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 what if it was Vlad Guerrero Jr. or 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 you know Joel Embiid? Here's the reality. Again, nobody knows. If it was Britney Spears, huge story, huge. If it was Jay Z, massive story. It's not. It's not. If it was me, nobody would care. My family would, but nobody else would. That that's why it's not the biggest sports story. <laughs> that that's why. In reality, it's the WNBA. Hate to say it, it's the WNBA. Nobody's paying attention. That's you know the the truth of what it is that landed right there in front of you. Nobody's paying attention because it's not Tom Brady, who everybody knows. It's just not. It is not LeBron James. It is not Britney Spears. It, 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 it's just a woman who's a great basketball player, and she is great at her sport. But that is a sport, well, that nobody, you know, outside of a few pay attention to. Even though no matter how many times, oh, you got to watch this. It's just as great as the NBA. No, it's not. Because if it is, then why do we have the NBA? Why well, we should have one league? Well, because, uh, because yeah, we get it. Not trying to be mean, just being honest. If it was Serena or Venus, huge story. Brittany, mm, I can guarantee you, Serena Williams walks into a mall in America. She goes to the Mall of America. <laughs> or just, you know, anywhere, like somewhere where there's, you know, Disneyland. Everybody knows who she is, regardless of whether or not you watch the sport that she plays. If Brittany Griner walks in, 5%, if that, that's the reality. 323-538-2423, at Chad Benson Show is your Twitter. Tweet at us. Text the program. Jeez, Chad, that wasn't very woke. No, it was just honest. I'm embarrassed for us, and I'm going to tell you guys why right now. Uh... In our wokeness. First of all, (sighs) 
This is a poll conducted by Quinnipiac. March 4th through 6th, majority of Americans, adult Americans, identify as Republicans or independents, say they would fight for the country if we were in the same position as the Ukrainians. 68% Republicans, 57% independents. The Democrats, on the other hand, no. Only 40%. Shame. When you break down the age bracket, it gets even worse. Yeah. Mostly men would stay and fight, right? The the age bracket uh only 40 uh, uh, uh when it get when you get to so you're looking at the age bracket like okay, say who would stay and fight, right? Okay, well the older generation shit, they're staying and fighting for sure, right? 50 to 64 Sixty-six percent, thirty-five to forty-nine, fifty-seven percent, forty-five percent for eighteen to thirty-four. The ones who are the youngest. You know, we joke about the wokeness in this world that we have, right? But our kids have everything they can ever dream of, and then some. And they still say dumbass things like, "So just because I don't work or contribute to society in any way." doesn't mean I shouldn't have everything that I want. Like, I deserve that. Oh, yeah, you do. You, you deserve that. So insane. But this, think about this for a second. Think about this. And we always talk about wokeness. And people, you know, my, my partner, when we do Woke Wednesday on my local show, and there's like, I just don't get it. I just don't think anybody does. I'm like, this is the stuff that you need to understand. A younger generation doesn't feel they should stay here and fight for our country because they're going to schools where they're being told our country essentially is awful. That there's so many better things out there than this country. And so why would you want to stay? Right? It's a patriarchy. It's misogynistic. It's racist. It's homophobic. It's all the things that are ick or ism that live here that's bad. An older generation, they understand what the grundle kick looks like. They understand that there's evil out there. They understand things in a much different way. And so when I joke about the quote-unquote wokeness of the world understand that it is it's a situation that plays for real in real life because you're seeing it on a daily basis whether it's some schools across the country in the crt battle whether it is it is a situation where you've got uh you know i mean like the don't say gay bill is a perfect example oh man that don't say gay bill that came out man that's just uh, have you read any of it I went and read the bill. It's none of the things in there that people say it is. But they're being said, oh, the state, these people, this group, this all they're all homophobic, they all hate. It's none of that. It's like a made-up word that somebody threw out there to rabble-rouse kids who have it so damn good to a country that many of them don't respect. And that's okay by a lot of educational people's standards. It's not. And the fact that these these group of people would say, nah, I'd rather leave the country than fight for it. Well, where are you going to go that's better? Just explain that to me. Well, I'm going to go here, I'm going to go. No, where are you going to go that's better? There's so many other countries that are better. Then go there now. Why don't they want you? Why aren't you why 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 isn't the rest of the world banging down their doors? I'm gonna go to Scandinavia. Oh, super diverse, by the way. Good my God. Like some of them are like six foot two, and some of them are like five nine. It's it man, this should piss you off. It should be. By the way, that number. Even with Republicans and everybody else, and I understand, like if you're if you're if you're if you're a single mom, 
you got to think, okay, I, I would have to get the hell out of here. I can't, I'm not going to leave. Who am I going to leave my kid with? If you have no family, any of those things. And just because you say you won't doesn't mean that you wouldn't. And just because you say you would doesn't mean that you actually would. Meaning you might say I would never fight, but you would fight. And, and, and we've seen that right now with their biggest anti-gun parliament member in the Ukraine who has taken up arms to fight. But the fact that we come out now and say, and I think there's a, a younger generation who has zero idea of who we are, where we came from, both the good and the bad. Hey, we are not without wars. 100%. We got all kinds of issues that, that, that we have done things in the past that we should absolutely look back and think, let's never let that happen again and be angry about. But when you see where we've come from to where we are and the beacon of on that hill that we are to so many, maybe you rethink that, yeah, you know what, if somebody came here, I'm fighting, not just for myself, but for the future. But when you go to schools nowadays and they're basically told that everything about this country is awful and horrible and evil and bad, why would anybody fight for that? 323-538-2423, at Chad Benson Show, your Twitter Tweet at us, text the programs, wrap it up, straight ahead, Chad Benson Chew. Warning, no snowflake zone. Uninformed opinions are in danger of melting. The Chad Benson Show. 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 Sir Ernest Shackleton leading an expedition in 1915 to try and cross Antarctica, but his ship, the Endurance, got caught in ice and sank. The entire crew spending months surviving on the ice before a small team in a tiny boat managed to sail hundreds of miles to the nearest inhabited island. Then they were able to go back and rescue the others. Now the Endurance has been found. It lies 3,000 meters in one of the most unexplored bits of ocean bed on planet Earth. The sea is covered, usually, with a shield of sea ice. Historian Dan Snow says it's remarkably well-preserved. Cameras even making out the name Endurance and gold lettering on the ship. Yeah, I've seen some of the pictures. It's awesome. Shackleton, like, he was an explorer that, like, kind of explored. Like, he did stuff, and then you're like... It was more about, like, the reason he's, he rose to fame... Uh, is the fact that they survived. All 28 of his peeps got home, and they were in hell. Like, the ice had frozen around their boat, eventually it sank. They were on, like, ice blocks that eventually moved towards the north, and they got onto uh, an island, Elephant Island, and then they they were going to get a boat and try to just row to another island, and they ran into a whaling station that had some Norwegians there, and then the rescue, but all 20 of his people got there. But he was kind of, you know, it wasn't the, <laughs> it wasn't like, it, his drive was like that uh, kind of drive was, was amazing. The the rest of it, the, the, the execution wasn't great. Uh, 323 5 Three eight twenty four twenty three at Chad Benson Show is your Twitter. Tweet at us, text the program again. A nightmare in Ukraine continuing to go on. Now, a hospital has been hit in Mariupol, and it is a maternity hospital that also has children in there. And this is another situation where the world ratches it up, the anger they have towards them, and you start looking around and going, hey, "What else can we do now?" What else can we do? How else can we go about doing these things where we can help them fight and cripple them economically? So we help them fight and cripple them economically. If you missed the uh, interview with Mike Lyons, which is very interesting because we were talking about the nuclear side of things and and what if he did something and, and, and does he want to at some point in time goat us in to trying to get into it, hoping that it would turn the tides, especially if his country starts turning against him more and more. And he said, you know, yes, and that's why we have to be cautious and smart, that even if he went and let's say he hits Estonia or Latvia, one of the Baltic nations that's part of NATO, that we don't immediately rush in, that we, 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 we temper that, hoping that cooler heads prevail, 
making sure they've got all the stuff they need, but without getting to the point where they think he might, you know, fire off a nuke or something. Interesting. Horrible at the same time. 323-538-2423. At Chad Benson shows your Twitter. We got you over the hop. We do it every single week. We'll do it again tomorrow. Have a great day. Night, night, Jack. This is the Chad Benson Show.